Hi folks, Andy C here from Andrew Chappelle Natural Bodybuilding on Facebook. So today I'm going to talk about natural bodybuilding controversy. And I've talked about this before in the past regarding the WADA prohibited substance list. So there's a video on YouTube, you can check this out. But the topics, uh, topics reared its ugly head again, so I thought it was maybe worth making another video about this. So, the reason this sort of subject came round again, or perhaps it's never really gone away, is because at the World Finals recently, so at the DFAC Worlds, where an athlete failed the, um, for taking a substance that was on the banned substance list, they actually never even got to take part in the competition itself, because prior to taking part in the competition and doing your polygraph test, what you do is you have to list all the supplements that you've taken and the drug control officer identified one of the substances, sorry, one of the supplements that this competitor was taking contained a banned substance. So that then results in this athlete being banned from the uh, banned from the show. Now what makes this issue controversial is the fact that um, that particular banned substance has got a, a track record for being identified as being a banned substance. There's been a lot of controversy around that banned substance because um, we've had discussions on Facebook, heated ones at points between athletes saying they should be allowed to take this particular uh, substance or they shouldn't be allowed to take this particular substance as well. Now, I'm not going to privilege that particular substance because as I say, in the past I've done a, a video talking all about this and why you should or you, you shouldn't be able to, uh, to take this sort of product. What makes this actually even worse though is the fact that this particular product, um, the athlete in question asked their coach could they take this particular product. The coach said okay they checked it out um, and they found out that it was actually fine to take. So the athlete said, thought they had done their homework, they'd asked their coach, the coach then relayed back to the athlete and said, don't worry, this, this is fine, you can take it. And lo and behold, the, uh, the athlete ends up failing. So there is some fault to be laid down here at the, um, perhaps the athlete for perhaps not doing the extra detail or going the extra mile and actually checking this substance out for themselves. But certainly the, uh, the coach in question, there is certainly a, a discussion to be had about is that incompetence on the coach's part for not being able to go to the lengths of actually identifying if the substance is banned or not, or if he couldn't go out and identify if that substance is banned or not, could he not have gone and found someone who was capable of finding that information out for him um, as well. Now, if you Google this substance, you find out quite quickly that this substance fits into the category of beta 2 antagonists. And then if you search the WADA banned substance list or the prohibited list, then you find out quite quickly that all beta 2 antagonists are banned. So it, it's not that hard to actually go and identify if this substance has been banned or not. At the same time, if you do a, a quick Google search, some of the first things that pop up are discussions on this product being banned as well or this particular substance has been banned for athletes taking part in natural bodybuilding shows so the lengths that this athlete went or sorry rather this coach and athlete went to check if the substances was banned or not were, were obviously not very great in, uh, in terms of looking now what baffles me is that in a time where we've got the russian doping scandal we've had more scandal come to light about Chinese athletes potentially doping as well. We've had retrospective fails from the London Olympic Games, the um, certainly the Beijing Olympic Games as well. We've had the Lance Armstrong doping crisis and everything that went along with that. And then you've got documentaries like um, Invictus, uh, oh sorry, not rather... Um, Invictus, I forget the name of it, that's uh, on Netflix just now um, with Ben Fogel, that there's more public awareness of, of doping than, than ever. And in this time whereby we've got more awareness of, um, of, of doping than ever, we've got natural bodybuilders who would be 
so flippant that they would think that pushing for less stringent drug testing criteria would actually be a good thing for the sport of natural bodybuilding, so less clean sport rather than more stringent um, criteria. So people unwilling to perhaps, I guess you could say, uphold the, the natural ethos or the natural sort of values. Now, being natural obviously means different things to uh, to different people, clearly when you um, when you sort of get these arguments that come to fruition. And most of the arguments I can tell, based around uh, people want to take particular banned substances or not, seem to centre around the fact that either they're sponsored by a company that produces these sort of products, they've taken these products themselves, so they are in some way not considered as natural as their, uh, their peers. This annoys them, so they then make arguments around about wanting to take these substances or not, because they're not considered as natural, or they're frustrated that they can't compete in certain federations because they're not considered as natural as their, um, as their peers. Obviously, people have potentially got a vested interest in these sort of substances because maybe they maybe they coach athletes or maybe they can't get themselves in shape without taking these substances or not. So there's many discussions you can have around of, well, what are people's motives for taking these particular compounds? And most of them, for me, seem to be based around the idea that, okay, someone's probably taking this sort of substance and it just kind of annoys them that they're, they're not considered natural compared to their... Um, compared to their peers. Now, the arguments are essentially that it's not realistic to follow something like the uh, the WADA code or the, the WADA prohibited list in natural bodybuilding because lots of supplements contain these products and we can't all expect to be experts in reading labels and things like that. Now, I alluded to this the other day there when I said that the greatest irony in physique sports is that most people call themselves athletes, but none of them are willing to sort of actually do anything to actually act like an actual athlete. So they don't take responsibility. It's probably your, your first thing. They don't take responsibility for their, their training. They don't take responsibility for their diet and nutrition. And they're certainly not taking responsibility for checking that the products that they're taking are either banned or, or not banned under the sort of WADA criteria. Yet they like to still call themselves um, call themselves athletes. And I can get that. There's there's something nice about calling yourself an athlete. But an athlete takes responsibility for everything they do. They look after their training. They look after their diet, their recovery. They make sure the things they're taking allow them to be a clean athlete. And if they're not taking responsibility for those things, then they're working with people who can look after them to take responsibility for those things, okay? So being an athlete's a full-time job. It's not just a part-time job. And if you're not willing to take responsibility for those sort of things then you're just a gym rat. You're just a guy that goes to a gym, you do a bit of training, you train hard, maybe you don't focus on your, your training as hard as you should do in terms of programming. Maybe you do a bit of dieting, but it's not as thought out as it should be. And if you can't be bothered to take substance lists, things that are on a banned substance list, or you're taking things that are causing you to fail, then that's just a lifestyle choice, okay? You want to take those supplements, you take them. But don't call yourself an athlete, and don't be calling yourself a natural athlete either. Now, I think some of the um, the confusion or the, the controversy about the WADA code stems from the fact that a lot of people don't actually understand what the WADA code is based on or the people that make the decisions to uh, decide what goes, on to a, what goes on to a banned substance list or not. But there's three basic sort of criteria which decide whether or not something makes itself onto the banned substance list. So the first criteria is or rather, one of the criteria is that is a particular substance performance enhancing? Okay, so does it have a performance enhancing effect? Is that particular substance harmful to your health or potentially harmful to your health? Or do we know what the long-term implications of that substance are? Probably not, so that can probably fit in that criteria. And then the third one is that it breaks the spirit of sport. So to give you an example of this, we know that um, creatine monohydrate is performance enhancing, but it's pretty benign. If you take it, then it's going to be performance enhancing, but it's not going to be harmful to your, your health by uh, any degree. It also doesn't break the spirit of sport as well. So you could actually just eat a few extra steaks a day. You wouldn't even actually have to eat that much and you would get enough creatine in your diet as, uh, as well. Anabolic steroids, definitely performance enhancing, 
definitely when abused or um, certainly harmful to your health. We'll not get into that. And again, breaking the, the spirit of sport. So taking a substance that allows you to perform well over and above your natural body's capabilities. Also, you're not getting synthetic testosterone from your diet. It's just, it's just not going to happen. So that's your sort of criteria for this. So things like experimental drugs, um, things that are during being used clinical trials. I mean, you can't use these sort of things because, again, we, we don't know if they're a performance enhancing, perhaps, or maybe they might be performance enhancing, but definitely potentially harmful for your health and uh, certainly against the uh, the spirit of sport as well because these are synthetic things that are being produced in labs that you're not going to be able to obtain from your diet. They're, they're pharmacological sort of agents. So that's what the sort of three principles are for the, uh, the WADA criteria. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's absolutely perfect. I mean, there are certainly um, discussions you can have about those three sort of criteria, but the list itself is compiled by experts, okay? So people sit around the table, you've got toxicologists, pharmacologists, geneticists, biochemists, physiologists, ethics lawyers, etc., etc., off of here. And they are the people that will go through the various substances that are being used just now and they'll decide if not, if or if not, something merits going on to this sort of prohibited list, okay? And they do it with stakeholders present, so that's another thing that we have to sort of consider. And these people are experienced, lots of research goes into compiling these lists, and it's not just a bunch of guys that own a supplement company that happen to sponsor a bodybuilding show or a bodybuilding federation deciding whether or not things should be omitted from a list there, because clearly that sort of thing would not be ethical at all. So that's what I've got to say about natural bodybuilding controversy. If you uh, if you like this video, then leave a comment down below in the, uh, the comments box. If you've got your own opinions on this sort of subject, then by all means, then I'd, li I'd like to hear what you've got to say. I know it's a really hotly um, debated topic. And uh, finally, I've been a little bit quiet the last few weeks. I've not really put up many videos or, um, or photos or anything like that. But um, I think I'm probably going to start putting up some more, certainly in the, the new year, um, talking about my training and what I'm going to be planning on doing uh, next month. So stay posted for uh, things on there. Always check out my Instagram as well, Fueled by Scott Soats. And I'll be planning on doing some um, more podcasts as well with uh, Dave K for our Pro Natural Performance podcast. So be sure to check out the YouTube channel as well. And as, uh, as always, as I always say, Make sure you train hard, make sure you train smart, and um, I'll add this one as well. Make sure you can always justify everything that you're, uh, everything you're doing, okay? So thanks for your attention, and um, yeah, thanks again.